He is a prominent Nairobi lawyer, arguably one of the best in land law and conveyancing. He participated in crafting the current three land acts in Kenya, also the first chair of the HIV Task Force in Kenya. He is the chairman of Gormahia Football Club, Dr. Ambrose Otieno Rachel. In this particular interview, he is going public about his membership of the Free Mason Society in Kenya. This is NTV. My name is Duncan Haimba. Dr. Ambrose Lachiel, what is Freemason? Well, Freemasonry is uh, a society like many other societies. I think uh, the nearest I would equate it to is the Rotarian uh, society. It is arguably one of the oldest societies in the world coming from medieval times. Um, many secret societies existed, particularly in England, but masonry became much more formalized from around 1640 and uh, got very perfected around 1813. It is an organization, members uh, organization, into which you are invited by private, uh, uh, usually by somebody who knows you uh, very well. But our main objective is charity, if you ask me, is to do charitable uh, activities to help uh, humanity. Um, but in the process also, of course, we uh, ensure that our inte intellectual faculties are all the time uh, uh, interrogated and uh, we also just have something that you can uh, call companionship or fellowship uh, usually by even having dinners and so on. I think that is the best I can say about it. What is your response to those who say that it is a satanic enterprise or some sort of devil worshipping? Yes, I think it's all about uh, ignorance if you get to the Masonic Hall, the first thing is what kings, this is a citation from King Solomon to God, that I shall build you a an house and you shall establish your throne forever. It is reference to building of a temple of God. Nothing could be further than satanic from that reference. And indeed, masonry is about building a temple. And that's why we have degrees of builders. I think most of it are talking from the point of view of, of Christianity. Yet masonry does not, is not based on any particular religion. We have Muslims in Freemasonry. We have Christians. We have Buddhists. And of course, a few, you could also have a few atheists. And so, so that there is no reference whatsoever to issues of devil worship, whoever the devil is. Maybe if you could just break it down for us. How does one become a free mason? Yes. Um, first is uh, uh, when you get to hear about it and you are lucky to be get to get in there. I'm saying lucky in the sense that unless you get to know about it from somebody else, you may never be interested in it. And in particular, with these negative attitudes that are being propagated by ignorant people, uh, you will never hear about it. So somebody who is an insider, like I have been there from 1994, uh, I would find it something good something that you would want to invite a friend of yours. So I might say that, look, uh, Mr. Haimba, I'm looking at you. I think you're a very good man because it's about good people. It's, you're a good man. You're, you like charity work. You like helping people and all kind of things. So 
I will tell you, Mr. Hayemba, would you mind my introducing you to this? Then I will give you a, a little bit of a talk. And uh, after that, um, I would then propose, I would go to a meeting and propose that I have somebody who should, I think I should introduce. You were then invited for an interview. We talked to you about a few things. In particular, we are concerned about your family, what your family will think about you because of all these negative things, uh, if there's any objection from us. So it will then be announced. It's just like uh, publishing a, a, a publication for a, for a wedding. So we'll say, OK, anybody with an objection. So it will go on. You'll be there for some time that I'm proposing. It will openly propose. And we give time to anybody who objects. If there's anybody who objects, then you will not come in. Mm -hmm. And the objection will be somebody who knows you have negative character. So from there, you will, if there is no objection, you will be initiated. You will be brought in and uh, welcomed and shown what it is all about. Okay. Right. You've talked about uh, being initiated. How is one initiated? Well, we have got our own ceremony. It's just like uh, something like, you know, you have a ceremony for uh, a wedding or we have a cultural function like uh, during circumcision. There are certain rituals that uh, I may not be talking about uh, publicly, but we do have in initiations, as, as, as you know. Uh, look at a rite of passage, say, for, uh, uh, in cultural settings. Um, um, uh, a wedding, traditional wedding, Christian wedding, all that. So it's, that is how the initiation goes on. This, uh, the way it is, it is done when you're being welcomed into, into Freemasonry. All right. Mm. You've said you joined the Freemason in 1994. Yes. How did you join? Well, a friend of mine, two friends of mine, well, let him say a first friend of mine came and mentioned to me and said, have you heard of uh, free, uh, free masonry? Yes, I have heard about it, but I don't know what is inside. So he took me through it, and then eventually said, uh, asked me if I wanted to be proposed, if I wanted to be proposed. And uh, so he got a friend of his also, who knows me, because you have to have two people, uh, somebody proposing, somebody supporting. Then it was uh, I was then uh, taken through to uh, uh, interviewed, as I said, mm -hmm. accepted then initiated, and I have since grown to be a very senior officer. Okay. Yes. Public perception is that uh, it entails uh, oath-taking. Mm. No, there is no oath-taking, and there's nothing wrong with oath-taking anyway, first of all, before I even come to that. You see, you are elected a member of parliament. What do you do? You take an oath. What is wrong with that oath? Nothing. I've seen recently uh, members of parliament swearing. You are uh, appointed to the Court of Appeal. You are sworn in as a judge. You take an oath. Mm -hmm. You are becoming a magistrate. You are sworn in. Take an oath. You are being admitted to practice medicine. You take an oath. So, I first of all want just to correct that there is nothing, you know, people really try to trivialize things by making innocent actions. You see, if you, for example, go to court and then you, you, don't, you don't want to take the Bible, you do your affirmation. That is an oath. So, there is no uh, strange oath that anybody takes in, in, in Freemasonry. Okay. We are... Uh, now that you've said, you might not give us in details on uh, how to join, mm. but uh, if I may ask, mm. how many stages do we have and uh, at what stage are you in? You've said you are now a senior member, but how many stages or degrees do we have that one has to undergo in the world of uh, Freemason? Yeah. The craft masonry is divided into three. You go in as a junior person and enter the apprentice, you become a, a, a craft person then you become a master. So that is those those three degrees. There are others that go on until uh, the highest degree that you can get into is uh, what we call a 33rd degree in, uh, in, in, in Freemasonry. And that is symbolic. That is the age of Jesus. 
Good. I am now at 30th degree. So where is, where is the, the devil there? I ask again, where is the devil? Okay. Yes. okay. But it's different from what I call the, these ranks. You have to go through those, those ranks, and then, uh, depending on just your seniority and your activity, your performance, there's a lot of work that you have to do there mm -hmm. to be able to. So it, it, it also re requires very clear thinking to become to be a, to be a Freemason if you want to join. Okay. Uh, you need to be have a, you have to be a clear thinker, and you have to have interest. But we also welcome those who uh, just want to come and enjoy. There's a lot of enjoyment in, in it because of the camaraderie mm -hmm. that there is. Okay. Tell me about um, why it is uh, um, um, an only men's affair. No, nowadays there is, I think there is a women's affair in, 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 the, in, the, in the U.S. They have started admitting admitting uh, admitting women so it is no longer a women's uh, a men's affair alone but i will take you back a bit into history just ask yourself in the catholicism in catholicism the fathers and they're called fathers they're not even anybody else for a long time you've not seen women in there so it's just part of uh, gender issues that really need to be uh, to be addressed, and some of them just have their origins in, uh, as I say, medieval practices, medieval times, and uh, you wonder why women were disenfranchised, even in the U.S. until 1964. You see, so these are things that we, as men, we need, we need to address, and I believe, and I, I'm, I'm happy that the Americans have started addressing it so that there can be women Freemasons. Okay. Why not in Kenya? Well, it comes from there, I think, see, see, you get leadership. And, and, and I would like somebody to tell me uh, why for a long time we, have, we, don't have, we, have, we haven't had women, women priests in the, in the Catholic Church. And that is a Christian church. I'm trying to divorce this idea that some devil, devilish men are meeting somewhere to uh, take oaths and uh, uh, do things that are, uh, uh, are not uh, permissible. And just for your information, in 1995, I think uh, as a result of this uh, protracted uh, debate about uh, devil worship, I think President Moy formed a commission or a, a task force to come and look into Freemasonry. And I remember them visiting us at the Freemasons Hall. I saw some of my friends in there, lawyers in the commission, and we were able to answer them and give them questions. And I think since then, uh, I think... Uh, the, the whole thing has been demystified. In other words, all that talk about devil worship, we ushered them in and took them round the whole place and asked them uh, uh, to, to ask us questions. And uh, I think that was a good thing to open it to uh, the world for people to, to see what Freemasons do and what they stand for. Okay. Right. If I may take you back, mm. you said that uh, joining it is by invitation mm. and somebody has to introduce you. Yes. Why so much secrecy? There's no secrecy. It's a question of trying to make sure that we don't have crooked people joining, joining you. I mean, this, uh, there must be. Uh, today we have elected... Uh, we have, we have appointed uh, ministers. They are vetted. So this is like kind of a vetting of a person. There is no secrecy. It is to vet you to say, are you a suitable person? Sometimes we get people who uh, get disinterested and they, they are allowed, to, they are allowed to, to, to leave, actually, when you find it's not the right thing for me to, or, or the right place to be. But the purpose of getting you is we are trying to build a group of people who are of the same kind of the same feathers so we expect you to introduce if you think you are honorable we expect you to introduce somebody who is also honorable in society mm -hmm. yes it is a question of class it's a question of somebody you could be almost same Ill illiterate yes and you will come in because we look more at the objective what kind of person eh? you are a good person that's what we want to call ourselves and two we embrace charity. I want to emphasize the issue of charity. Do you have views about charity? Do you practice charity? Right. There's uh, a notion out there that people join the Freemason Society 
uh, ostensibly to acquire wealth mm. and power. What is your comment? Uh, none of those, uh, none of the of, the, of those two. Um, we join Freemasonry to propagate charity, uh, and uh, there's a few wealthy people in Freemasonry. Then there are those people who just live ordinary lives, like my, my, myself. Uh, I'm not a wealthy person, and I'm not a I'm not a powerful person. In fact, most of the people there are just simple Kenyans. Some of them businessmen, some of them are medical practitioners, some of them are lawyers, and uh, there is no discrimination as to what kind of person you are. What I can say is that there are very few politicians, if I remember. I don't think we have any politician. Some of us are, some of them are judges of, of our courts, and all kind of things. So it's a mixture, and the common denominator is not wealth, the common denominator is charitable practices. Thank you. Dr. Rachel, one of the widely held uh, beliefs is that uh, it involves sac sacrificing of close family members mm. for wealth or power. Mm. Yes, I had all that, but in my over uh, 20, I think 94 to so this time is almost 28 years, is it? Yes. Yes, from that time up to now, I have never seen a sacrifice. I have not seen anybody who has sacrificed anybody. Understand people are sacrificing their sons or their, or, their, or their children. There is nothing like that. And masonry is universally practiced. That is the amazing thing. As I said, we, if you go to a lodge in India, they practice just the same thing as we, see, as we practice in Nairobi. I have visited a lodge in England, uh, because we're allowed to visit other places and see what, what, what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I visited um, uh, a lodge in, 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 in the London itself, and I just found they are ordinary people, and we, uh, they talk about charity that we talk about here. Right. So you've said that you've heard about uh, people sacrificing their sons and all that. Have mm, you lost those, any, any member and uh, have any people attributed maybe because you are a me that member of the society? Uh, just ask the question again, please. I'm saying you've mm, said you've mm, heard about uh, people sacrifice. sacrificing their sons. Yes. Have you had any incidents where you've lost a family member and maybe people have thought it's because uh, you are a member of the society? Uh, luckily, I, uh, and I want to thank God for this. Uh, all my children are alive and, uh, and none have lost, no single child. They are known, you know. I've got a son who is 43 years old. He practices law with me in my, in my farm here. And I have other children. I have suffered no death. Actually, in my family, I have only lost uh, my father, my parents, both of them. And last year, I cut a COVID. I lost my brother, who was 60 years, 60 years old. So I don't see, not even the slightest reference to any kind of sacrificing anybody. This is a myth. It does not happen. It, I can say that it has not happened anywhere that I know myself. Okay. And it does not happen in East Africa. Mm -hmm. We have uh, branches and we visit seashells for uh, brotherhood. We uh, visit uh, 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 Tanzania. Like in this November we are going to be to establish a lodge in Tanzania. We visit Uganda and normally it's a great pleasure to go and also uh, kind of uh, do what we call workings in some of those places. Okay. Um, we go and meet brothers in, uh, like we have a district of East Africa where we have a head of a head and um, we do these visits, I've uh, talked to Tanzanians, I've not had anybody being sacrificed in Tanzania or in, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so this is, I think lose some loose talk by people. I think I can call them idle minds. 
I see. Have you initiated any of your children, your family members? Yes, I have my very close relatives are in there. I've, I've put in many of them. Uh, close to 20 people that I have already uh, taken in, very close uh, family members. Mm -hmm. But they have to opt. It's not like I'm pushing them to go in. So you see, you see the contradiction. You bring in your son, you bring in uh, your nephew, you bring in your friend. But now let's look about the son. Now, this is the same son you want to sacrifice? That makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. How does your family take it? Because you are a member and you've They know it and they're, they're, they're happy with it. Because you see, we go and you come back home. And you tell them today we are going for Freemasonry, yeah, usually around 6 o'clock or so. And by 9 o'clock or so, you had to tell them, please don't keep dinner for me. Today I'm going to have dinner at the Freemasons Hall, which is on, uh, is it now called uh, it's, it's Nyerere Road? That's where it is, on Nyerere Road. And uh, you tell them, they know it. My children know, my family know that today Ambrose Rachel is going to go forward and you drive there. There's a way we dress so I also carry my my attire to go and dress. Okay. Yes. Interesting. So it's it, it, you know this is if you take a look at it as a, as a society of men now that is the only part that I would want to apologize about that we should in shortly bring in women also mm -hmm. because what we are talking about is a subject that concerns everybody else. And we have projects that we, we give. We, 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 would, we, would, we would support school fees, we could support a building, we support an uh, old um, person's home in, in, in Mudaiga and all that kind of thing. So that is what we are doing. Yeah. You've said about the meeting mm -hmm. that it's from six o'clock yes. onwards along the road at the Freemason Hall. Yes. And uh, you've said about there's a way, you, is it the service, how it's conducted and you go there with the attire and all that. Could you Yes, depending, on, depending on, the, on, the, on, the, on the lodges, there are com completely different types of attire. Yes. Depending on the origin. You see, masonry had different, it, it had one origin, but sub subsequently there were times in the 17th or 18th century when there was there was a certain uh, uh, rebellions here and there mm -hmm. and it's just like what we have schism what we call a schism in churches where you start a church and then there is the conservative church and then there is an evangelical church and they go on like that so structure it in something like that why we have protestants as a different one we have um, uh, Christ is the, is, is, is the answer, then why we have some people praying on, on Saturday and say they are uh, uh, Adventists and all kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So Masonry is almost something like that, that we have different branches. Some are based on, like, you know, on, on uh, nations or countries, like, you know, there could be a Scottish Lodge, an Irish Lodge, an English Lodge. But you also go to France, you find that there was a lot of, this, at the moment we have a lot of um, uh, masonry, and we use kind of a, a book, we have books that we use for different uh, uh, lodges. So uh, maybe I'm saying more than you want to, more than what, what you want to hear. So each and every craft has got their system of, uh, of, uh, of, of uh, running the meeting. Yeah, and it's, it normally comprises many things. In other words, you have a meeting, mm -hmm. and we have somebody who chairs the, 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 the meeting, and you have people in a committee. The committee meets a day before any kind of uh, meeting. Uh, so if you're going to meet like, an, uh, and the lodges meet on different days. It is not just in Nairobi. We have a Freemasons Hall in Mombasa. We have a Freemasons Hall in, in Kisumu. And then uh, we have, for certain crafts, I think we have a hall in Ruiru and all that kind of thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, why is it that the meeting is from 6 o'clock and uh, how is it done? You had talked about the toasting, how you go in, how you dress. Just we uh, we, we, do, we do that because of people, people go to work. We recognize that people go to 
people go to work mm -hmm. and therefore we think that six o'clock and we also don't want you to stay too late because of family reasons. Masons are very good family people, very, very, very good, very, very responsible people. Um, and uh, I, 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 I'm not scared just to say I'm one of them and uh, it's something that I don't, I, don't, I don't regret. So the meeting of six o'clock is just to allow people to go to work and then you come and sometimes you see people rushing traffic, you know. Is it weekly? No, it's not weekly. It is monthly, uh, almost every month. With uh, and this is something to do with the British, with two months of leave, like uh, or three months of leave. Like we don't have, we don't have uh, meetings in August, and uh, September, and I think December. Mm -hmm. So those are for December. We devote it to the Lord. So those of us who believe in in that, we go to we go for Christmas. Mm -hmm. and uh, pray. How and, is the service and, and, done? No, that is what I will not talk to you about. It's not allowed. I'm not allowed to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That one is, I'm not allowed to. So if you want, I would want to propose you, uh, Mr. Haimba, to come and, 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 and join, and you will not regret. Okay. Then you will see how it is how it is done. But you have to paint a picture for me, the toasting, the dressing. Yes, for you, me can, you can come. No, you can come and talk to me, and if you are interested, then I'll be talking to you on one-on-one -on -one and you tell me, okay, this is what's going to... But again, mm -hmm. we have those secrets. We don't want, if you are at the, at the lower level, you don't, we don't tell you, we don't even tell you what we do in the second, in the second level or the third level, we can't. So, so that, you know, you, 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 you get to learn, you have to pass a certain test. So it is not about uh, ritualism. I can see that uh, you have kind of tried trying to explore more about ritualism. It, that is not the important thing. What, the, what, is the, what, what is important is the meeting of yes. these people yes. and to discuss matters of charity. Yes. And we talk a lot about that charity. I, I agree. At the end of it, actually, we at the end of it, we actually my my curiosity came mm -hmm. from what you had said uh, there's a particular way you go the attire and all that that is what wanted me to i wanted okay to let, let me answer you yeah. apart from the um, uh the, the, the pentecostal church of christ and the answer and and uh, uh the seventh day adventists who normally just come and dress the way they are they are dressed for i'm sure for certain clear reasons. Yesterday you saw uh, Olesa Pitt, Archbishop of K or Anglican Bishop. How was he dressed? Okay. The, the robe. Right. Yes. Then you've seen the Muslims going to, to pray. Mm -hmm. They're dressed in a certain way. Mm -hmm. The Catholic Church, you've seen their priests, mm -hmm. you've seen their fathers, you've seen the, uh, the, 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 the uh, top echelons you see the Pope, the way he is dressed, all that kind of thing. So I find it completely interesting that people would pursue how somebody is dressed in, 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 in free masonry, while the issue of dress, ceremonial dressing, is a thing that is in the public domain. Mm -hmm. It's like a policeman wearing a uniform to go to duty, and when he's on duty, off duty, takes, he takes it out. So what we wear in there depending on what the craft is just uh, you actually wear a suit and uh, then you wear some kind of apron that's what it is and that is all okay the apron is supposed to symbolize masonry to building because when you go to build you wear you do an apron for painting and all kind of thing mm -hmm. that is all okay. there's nothing be be beyond that but i want to emphasize this point that different uh, organizations, the ones that are dissociated from devil worship like open church and all these things. Yeah. People dress in a way that is sometimes fascinating. If you go to my, near my place in Luanda Market, uh, you find some people doing drums and they are wearing Israel Nineveh. Okay. Yes.
for 20 close to 30 years 30 call it 30 you are friends yes. do they know you are a freemason and um, have you lost some as a result because of um, the mystery people had associated it with the society no they're very happy uh, some of them actually joined some of them say they are busy or they are not interested i've got very very close friends and I can tell you, all of them know, because it's something I talk about, just the way I'm talking about it here. Who, uh, I mean, most people are very, very scared and uh, would not want to say, oh, well, I, think I do many things in this country. It has never brought down, I teach, I lecture in universities. I lecture, I've lectured for a long time, I lectured in the Kenya School of Law. I, as I told you there, I have been uh, chairman of a tribunal in, in this country. It has not denied me anything. I have not been discriminated against. I have not been avoided by anybody by virtue. I have suffered no prejudice whatsoever as a result of making it known. I think that people will gain more by talking to, you know, by, by talking to uh, like people like us, who should be able to demystify for you things that you know, mm -hmm. things that need to be demystified and. Uh, um, so the people get to know what is it. The more, the more it is shrouded in mystery, the more people uh, think that, oh, and you, uh, when you go to Nyerere Road, you find people trying to say, hey, what's happening, what's going on in there? Mm -hmm. And that's why we welcomed that task force mm -hmm. and took them round. Okay. And we showed them names of, the names of those who have led it are all published on the wall. Okay. Yes. So, so far, how many have led it in uh, Kenya, the Kenyan um, uh, chapter in the Kenyan we've said that there are, there are I think three halls but uh, largely about uh, 20 organizations. There are 25 I think or, or also um, I don't have the statistics but there are 25 lodges. Mm -hmm. So these lodges meet at, on different days. You know we have 30, 31 days in a Month. In, a, in, in a month. Okay. So we don't meet on Sundays okay. uh, except once in normally when we are during that time of uh, Ash Wednesday and all these things, uh, we, we normally have something called a church parade when we actually go to pray and we have a preacher mm -hmm. uh, talking to us and we read the Bible, the Holy Bible. Ah, yes. Which are the favorite books in the Bible that you people... Well, uh, I think uh, as Freemasons, we are closely associated with, uh, with Solomon, King Solomon. So Kings is a, is, is a book, I mean, the, 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 the Kings are okay, but we also, uh, when you talk about uh, rituals or about uh, ways of life, we, we do Leviticus, uh, it's important. But again, most important, you'll find that um, um, we look at what is the origin of man, we interrogate that. So Genesis becomes uh, uh, an important book, particularly one, uh, verse 26 to 28. Mm -hmm. uh, go and look at that and talk about uh, the origin of man, its creation, or, or what. Then, of course, I've talked about uh, the Exodus is important because you will, we are talking about the building of a temple in Jerusalem by King Solomon at part of the beginnings of free uh, masonry. And uh, so that you will find that the architects that we are, we, are, we are talking about were basically based in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So the book, I, I, would, I would say uh, Genesis is important, Leviticus, uh, Exodus is important, and uh, Leviticus is important. And then the kings, because there's a lot about talking about King Solomon and David, uh, son of Solomon, as a person who is, succeeds. So that Solomon was one of the Freemasons. David was also a Freemason mm -hmm. here. Um, you've said you joined uh, the Freemason Society in 1994. 94, yes. 1995, there was a tribunal about uh, devil worshipping and mm -hmm. all that. And you've said that the task force came to the Freemason Hall and they interviewed you. One year into it, I presume, were you grounded enough to an extent that uh, you'd be presented to give the position of the society in there? No, at that time I was not grounded enough. Now I am very grounded. But we went in just to also show solidarity 
there are those who would ask the questions. There are those who joined. Uh, uh, it's a friend of mine who is uh, uh, an aircraft engineer uh, at Wilson Airport. Uh, these are people who enjoyed who, who joined 1964, and uh, then there are those who were, who joined in 1967. We're still with them. Uh, we lost quite a number, but we are still with some of these people. Who are there 64? Mm -hmm. uh, 60, yeah, uh, around those who joined in the, in the 60s. You will find that those who joined, um, like my lodge, I think, was founded in, in, the, year, in the year 20, uh, 20 you know, uh, 1912 here. Then the others, I think, 1926, different lodges. So, but there is attrition by way of death, uh, but just natural causes. But you still find a lot of people who were initiated into Freemasonry in the 60s, 70s, and of course so many of us in the, in the, in the, in the 90s. Um, and now I'm, I'm happy that even the younger people are uh, coming in. We have very, very young people, pilots, doctors of uh, of, of medicine and uh, uh, ordinary Kenyans who have who like um, friendship. I, I keep using the word camaraderie. It's a, it's a French word, but it means friendship, uh, association, and all that, that kind of thing. Because at the end of it, it is a fusion of many things. Now, I want to go to revisit the uh, the 1995 uh, uh, tribunal. Uh, tribunal or whatever. I, it's called. There were senior, very, very, very senior members of the society who had been there from um, eighty, about from seventies, who were able to answer their questions. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, I wonder why the the, the, uh, the task force uh, findings who have never been made public. We have priests. We have reverends. In fact, in England, some of them are bishops in the Anglican Church, in the Catholic Church, and all kinds of things. So I want us Kenyans or Africans or East Africans to please disabuse ourselves of this mind of some devil worship. I don't see a bishop going to do devil, devil worship. So when it became public and went into parliament, you will find that they were ordinary people. You see, I always uh, desist from uh, describing the, 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 the uh, classes or the backgrounds of people who are in there simply because somebody might think that it is a class society. No. As I have said, if you look at the board, you will see chief justices of Kenya. Okay? Chief justices. One of these days, please come, I'll take you around. You see the chief justices of Kenya. Granted, there are a lot of who is who there. You will find somebody who's been a minister in the government of, of Kenya. But um, it's very common to have doctors of medicine because the doctor will bring another doctor. You will find lawyers. The lawyers will bring lawyers. We have quite a sizable number of pilots who fly here. And sometimes they fly and tell us, look, we are running out of time and they come in out of there. Then we have business community, people who are just businessmen, and we have uh, um, ordinary, an ordinary person is somebody like, you know, Ambrose Rachel there, mm -hmm. yeah, going in there. You call yourself ordinary I'm person. I'm an ordinary person, <laughs> I hold nothing in this country. Tell, tell us the, the, the structure Mm. Uh, what is the structure of the Freemason Society in Kenya? Uh, uh, who, is there a hierarchy? Or, yes, or there, 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 there is there's a hierarchy. First of all, we have what we, call, what, what, what we call a district. We have a district. It's not a CIA district or anything like that. The district of East Africa. So we have somebody who is the head of Freemasonry, the whole of East Africa, and he superintends Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, including Zanzibar, and then Seychelles, 
I think at one time we were also in, we were, we were, we also took in uh, Madagascar. I think they are still there with, the, with us. So that is the district of East Africa. Now, so we have an officer, and then from each and every country, there are those who assist him. Each and every country, again, sends in what you call some grand officer who goes in to sit with him. It's like a council mm -hmm. that he has, and they run. And they visit, just the way the bishop visits the churches, they will come and visit the lodges and see if things are going on uh, well. They come and visit the structure of the church mm -hmm. like that. Then in every lodge, there is somebody who is its chairperson. This is what is normally called the worshipful master. That is the chairperson. Mm -hmm. He does normally one year uh, and then gives hands over to the next person. So it goes so that we have you you climb and hope your dream of everybody is to become a worshipful master and then you you go away the last time i when I, I held that post myself was in the year 2000 i was a worshipful master of my lodge mm -hmm. so then you leave it you don't go again you leave it unless there's a death or something like that where you can come back again and try to finish a year okay. uh, there is a it, it, it moves. We are more democratic than any other person. We don't have to be given five years to be mm -hmm. chairman there. Is there a brotherhood code of solidarity that you're supposed to cover each other's back? No. Mm. Nothing of the sort. We actually expect you to be of uh, unquestionable uh, character. You have to have high moral turpitude mm -hmm. uh, to be able to uh, be accepted. Good Masonic practice. Of course, people err. Uh, somebody can, pe 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 people, human beings can make mistakes. Some people, and people, I, I recently, I mean, today I was reading about uh, a magistrate who robbed a person uh, of a phone and 10,000 shillings in the today's uh, uh, nation. They are human beings. So I wouldn't say once you're a magistrate, yes, you're expected as a judge or a magistrate to be of high moral standards, but there are sometimes rotten eggs, so, so that can happen, Yes. Yeah, and, but that is purely, th those must be few occasions that you, so if it happened, I mm -hmm. don't know about it myself, so it, it, must have been, it must have been wrong. What are some of the do's and don'ts once you are in the Freemason society? First, you are expected to be a good citizen, so that is the, one of the do's. We want you to be a good citizen, a loyal citizen, a one who follows the law, um, somebody who sets a good example. I'm making it that wide because that now comprises many, many things. We don't expect you to be, get yourself into dirty business if you're a businessman. We don't expect you to be a thief. We don't expect you to be a criminal. We expect you to obey laws. So that is one of the, talking about the oaths, that's one of our, that's an, an oath that you need to take that say that I promise to be a good man and we expect you to be uh, that. So we expect you to be charitable and to be mindful of other people's welfare uh, so that you get concerned, like the good Samaritan in the Bible, that in uh, Samaria um, are you, can you go out of your way to do something? Like, go to a school and you find a, a young man in very tattered clothes, UTC. Are you able to say, I will donate uniform and all that? That is the kind of thing that we expect you to do, to desist from criminal activity and to do good to humanity. A number of cremations of uh, high-profile Kenyans in the recent past have taken place. And uh, some of them, as you've said, uh, they've uh, been uh, singled out as being members of the society. Is there a policy when it comes to disposing a body of uh, a member once they uh, transition to the next world? No, we don't have a policy. These are personal uh, uh, decisions that people make. Um, you don't have to be cremated as a Freemason. I expect that I will be buried because uh, I have made no will to that uh, to, to that effect and we advise people, I'm talking now as a lawyer, I, I, we advise people to try to make uh, a will so that people get to know where what's, what's going to to uh, happen. So 
there is to answer it, you uh, uh, quickly is that, that we don't have a policy. If it happens that a number of them, a number of people being cremated there are Freemasons, uh, mm, I my guess would be that uh, looking at the population, we have a great Asian population, a great Asian population. So it is not because of it, it's not because of uh, it would not be because of Freemasonry. It would be more because of their own practices and, and cultural practices. Mm -hmm. yeah, they actually outnumber the Africans, I might tell you that one. But before, before that, the great population was again white because of the origin of, of Freemasonry. Mm -hmm. And most Africans kept away precisely because of these issues that uh, you are raising with me. That is suspicion. People did not know what it was. So when people get to know what it is, mm -hmm. We are getting, as I said, very many young people uh, coming in. People in late twenties now. We begin to have late twenties. Originally, people would go in at fifty or or so, but at the moment we are getting people at late late twenties because it's beginning to be appealing. It's going to be de beginning to be de uh, mystified. So again, just to emphasize, uh, at the moment, looking at the whole of East Africa. I think the Asian population uh, right. is greater than all the other uh, populations. So there may be just their cultural practices. As you know, they treat different uh, Muslims and Asians treat death differently from us. We want to keep the body for a long time, preserve it. You see, go and build a mausoleum to be able to preserve and show my father was buried here and write a lot of things on some stone or something like that. But here are people who say, I'll be disposed of the Muslim before the end of the day. And the uh, um, uh, other uh, Asiatic uh, communities, uh, Kariako every day is very busy with firewood and things happening. And sometimes they've also gone to Langata mm -hmm. now. So I wouldn't say that they are there because of mason masonry, okay. because of... Uh, uh, practice. You've said that um, you read the Bible when you go for the service and uh, the book of uh, Genesis, uh, Leviticus, uh, King, favorite the King, uh, King of Solomon. Uh, out there again, perception has always been that if you want to rattle a Freemason, if you want Mukutano Ikwishe, invoke the name of Jesus Christ. Do you people invoke the name of Jesus Christ? Oh, we do not invoke the name of Jesus Christ in our meetings. The, what I talked to you about is what we have once a year called a church parade. That is where we read the Bible and we have a sermon in the strict sense of the word. And the sermon is by one of us. Yes. I could be the one uh, leading the sermons, uh, uh, the sermon on, on that uh, on, some, on, on, on that day, and uh, I get the topic, do a, a preacher, say the moral of it, and then uh, close it there. But in every meeting, in every meeting, we have a Gita. You know Gita? The Asian book, open, and then we have the Bible also open, so that we respect if, and if there's anybody with a different religion who wants also the book to be there, we'll put the book there mm -hmm. for them. But there is always a Bible. If I walk with you in there, you will find the Bible open and there's a marker for it so that you will see okay. that there is a Bible. And then, as I say, we have a, a guitar. Then we have the Quran. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have the Quran to Kufu also there for the Muslims yes, to see their book. So that there is neutrality in terms of religion. The church parade that is normally held in March is open to everybody. And next time, if I remember, I'll invite you to come and uh, uh, join us and uh, into a fellowship. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've talked about joining. It has to be by invitation. Yes. And then there has to be some vetting. You've mm. said that you cannot disclose uh, details because of the secrecy involved unless I meet or one uh, I meet the, the, the requirements. Not quite. So, so do we have an exit clause once you get into Freemason, 
are you allowed to exit at any point? I will answer you two questions. Uh, I'll answer two, two questions. Uh, there is no secrecy in the vetting. It is just like, in fact, this happens to almost all societies. Who do you want to bring? Somebody might have an idea that this is a very known criminal. And you know, we don't want to have, we want to have image. If we know that this is a very, very known criminal, what does the public think about you? Yeah, I'm sure you have somebody in this country that if you are asked to, uh, what do you think about this person? Do you want, you'll say, no, 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 no. So and so, and you will put it, and it will, you will be allowed to speak about it. Mm -hmm. And then the person will never know who raised what about that? Nobody will know about it. You will just be told that it is declined. Mm -hmm. Nobody will tell you that. Nobody, nobody will give you a reason and it will not come out. So the secrecy is in the, it, it, you know, the, the uh, vetting is in finding out what type of character is, is, is so and so introducing. It is very rare that actually we reject, but there are others that we actually Reject. If you're a very well-known wash wash person, who is going to allow you to come in there? And because once you come in and people get to know that you are one of them, then they say, oh, look at the type of people these people Ah, So I don't want to be equated with somebody whose uh, character is questionable on that thing. That's number one. Number two, we have people who resign. You can resign. Uh, at any one time that you feel to, you want to leave. There are those who get deregistered because for a long time they are not participating in there, so we so also show interest. But we will let you know and say, look, why aren't you coming? But always we will send the person who proposed you to say, find out why is Mr. Hayamba? We have not seen him for a year. Oh, we have seen him. And because we are interested in your welfare also, so we'll be trying to find out, we'll send visits. Are you uh, indisposed? Is there a problem you're going through? It is. So it's really a brotherhood that goes just beyond being together there. We can come to your home and find out if you are, if you, if, if you, if you are undergoing any problem. All right. Yeah. Well, that was Dr. Ambrose Otieno Rachel taking us through the world of Freemason Society in Kenya. Thank you for watching NTV. My name is Duncan Hamba.